In this video, I'm going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A54 for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. Today, I'm going to be going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A54 for beginners. Here's a quick rundown of what I'll cover in the video. So we'll start with a walkthrough of all the buttons on the phone, exterior and the touchscreen buttons, and we'll go over how to navigate the screens. We'll talk about how to make calls, how to send text messages. Then we'll go over uh, one other important section called the notification panel. Then we'll move into how to download apps, how to make the text larger on the screen so it's easier to see um, the, the wording. Then we'll go over how to take pictures and we'll end the video with how to set up your email accounts. Okay, so make sure you watch the video all the way until the end so you don't miss any important information. Now, after this video, there are more videos. I have a ton of videos on this phone. So if you want to keep learning, I'll have a link right here to a playlist where you can find more videos or you can go down to the comment section and I'll have a link pinned to our playlist so you can keep learning after this video. So let's jump right in. So let's start with the buttons here. Now on the left side, you won't find any buttons, but on the right side, you will find the volume up, volume down, and the power standby button. Now just to show you, tapping this button once will wake up the phone. Pressing it again will put the phone to sleep. Now the phone is still on, it's just in a sleep mode. If you wanna turn the phone off, all you need to do is swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and then tap on the power button in the corner right here. This will take you to your power menu and allow you to restart the phone, go to the emergency call uh, setting, or to power off the phone, FYI. Now one more important tip, if you wanna put your phone on silent or vibrate, or uh, make sure the, the volume is up, you'll need to swipe down from the top of the screen, and you'll need to look for this little speaker icon here now this second little icon, when it's lit up, that means that your sound is on, this one right here. Now if I tap it once, it's gonna put a slash over the speaker and that means the phone is now in vibrate. So if you get a text message or if you get a call, the phone is gonna vibrate, it's not gonna make any noise. And if I tap it again, now the sound is totally off. You'll notice the button is now not blue anymore. And so a call or text, or, basically are not gonna make any noise or vibration. If I tap it again, now the sound is back on. So that's just a quick tip on how to control the volume of the phone. Super important and everybody needs to know that. Okay, so right side, we talked about our buttons here and bottom of the phone, you'll find your charging port. Now, if you ever need to buy a charger for this phone, the charging type is called a type C a type C charging type. Now, this phone is going to come with the cable to charge the phone, but it's not gonna come with the piece that goes in the wall. So, if you need a wall charger, you should find a link right here. There's gonna be a little shopping cart. If you tap on that shopping cart, you'll find a list of chargers that are compatible with this phone. You'll find car chargers, wall chargers. If you don't have one, definitely click on one of those links and get one so that you can keep your phone charged. Okay, so those are the buttons, nothing really at the top of the screen. Well, take that back. At the top of the screen, or excuse me, the top of the phone, you will find your SIM tray. So if you have a memory card and you'd like to insert it in the phone, you'll need to take your SIM tool and you'll need to put it in the little hole at the top of the phone, push, and this SIM tray will open up and allow you to add a memory card. Okay, so now let's talk about navigating the home screen. Now this is the home screen right here. And there's three buttons you'll need to know how to use. These are the main buttons that control the phone. So there is the home button in the center. To the left you have your recent apps button. And then to the right you have your back button. Let's start with the home button. So this is considered the home screen. So when you tap on this button, it takes you back to this screen. If I were to go to the Google Chrome app, which is your web browser, if you wanna search a website, you would tap on this Chrome icon. And guess what? When I tap on the home button, it's gonna take me 
back to the home screen. Um, no matter what I'm doing, even if I swipe over and I'm on a different screen, if I hit the home button, it takes me back to the home screen. So this is always your easy way to get back to the main screen is just hitting the home button. Now to the left, you'll have the recent apps button. And what this essentially does is every time you open one of these little icons, now these icons are called uh, apps. Now think of it like a computer. Computers have programs, phones have apps. Apps is short for application. So when I say app, I'm just referring to applications. Remember, applications are to phones, like programs are to computers. So all these little icons, I'll refer to them as apps. So if I open one of these little apps and I hit the home button, guess what? That app is still running in the background of the phone. If I want to go back to an app I was previously in, I can hit the recent apps button and it'll show me all the apps that I previously had open. I can go right back by tapping on that screen and I can get back to my web browser. So. That's really all this button does. Now, it, it also will allow you to close out programs that are running in the background of the phone. Obviously, too many programs running can slow the phone down. And as I scroll through, you'll see I have quite a few things that are running right now. So I can either swipe up, take my finger and drag it up the screen to close out some of these apps I'm no longer using, or I can tap on this close all button to close all the apps so that now nothing is running in the background of the phone, okay? Now, let's go over this third button here. This is called your back button. It basically takes you back one step. Now, let's go over an example of how to use this back button. So, I'm gonna go to the settings of the phone. Now, to get to settings, you'll need to swipe down, take your finger, drag it down the screen, this will take you to what's called the notification panel. We're gonna tap on this little settings wheel in the upper right corner. This takes you to the settings menu. And basically I'm gonna swipe up and let's say I wanna to go to display and I want to look at something in the menu. And then I go down and select another option right here. So now I've gone quite deep into the menu of the settings. If I want to go back one screen, I'm going to tap on this back button and that'll take me back one screen. If I want to go back one more screen, I'm going to hit back button again. And now I'm on the main menu of the settings. And if I hit the back button again, guess what? It takes me out of the application altogether. So all this button does in short, it just takes you back one step. That's it. Okay, so that's a basic rundown of just navigating the home screen. Now, um, let me point to just a few more things that you'll need to know in navigating now that you know how these buttons work. So if you take your finger and drag it up the phone, you'll find what is called your app drawer. This is where you'll find all the apps that are stored on the phone. Now later on in the video, I'm gonna go over how to download more applications or more apps, so stay tuned for that. But this is the section where you'll find all the apps that are on the phone, okay? Now, when I take my finger and drag it down the screen, this will take you to what is called the notification panel. And this is where you'll get alerts from different applications. Or let's say someone calls you and you don't answer, in this menu, it'll show as a missed call. Or if someone sends you a text message, it'll show up in this menu so you can read the message. So this is just always showing you different messages that are coming through the phone. If you see one you want to know more about, you simply tap on it and it'll take you into that message. So that's just a very short rundown of the notification panel. Now, one more thing I need to mention, when you swipe down from the top, you'll have these switches at the top of the screen. Now I already went over this switch, which is your volume switch, but you have other switches too. For example, you have your flashlight. Tapping this will allow you to use your camera flash as a flashlight. Ever walk in the house and the lights weren't on? Guess what? Turn your flashlight on and boom, you're good to go. Now, you also have your Bluetooth shortcut, your Wi-Fi shortcut. Let's say you wanna to connect to a Bluetooth speaker Take your finger and simply put it on this Bluetooth icon for one second. You just place your finger there and keep it. 
And now this will take you to the Bluetooth menu where you can connect to your Bluetooth devices. Now guess what, if I want to connect to my Wi-Fi network at home or at a coffee shop, I'm going to take my finger and put it over the Wi-Fi button and just put it right on the button for one second. It will take me to the Wi-Fi menu and this is where I can connect to a Wi-Fi network. So you simply tap, you find your network, you tap on it and then you'll need to type in the password and then hit connect and that will connect you to your desired Wi-Fi network. Okay, so that's our basic uh, walkthrough. Let's move on and talk about how to make calls and how to send text messages. So let's start with a call. If you'd like to call someone, you need to start with going to the phone app and make sure you're on the keypad option, which is this option here that will allow you to type in the, the number of the person you want to call. So put in the area code, put in the number. Here we go. So phone number is in. I'm gonna tap the green button that has a phone on it to initiate the call. And just give it a second. It will begin to dial the number. The call starts when you see this little dial begin to tick up. I can hit the speaker button here to make it louder. Alert means you can live that's in case you don't want to hold the phone up to your ear, you just want to hold it out. It'll make the call louder, put it on speaker, you can mute the call. You can hit keypad if you need to enter a combination. And when you're all done, hit the red button to end the call. Okay, next let's talk about how to answer the phone when a call is coming through. So I'm going to initiate a call and let's talk about how to answer the phone. So. Here we go, call is gonna come through. Now, call is coming through as a pop-up at the top of the screen. I can either tap the green button to answer the call, just tap, or I can tap the red button to decline the call. So let's decline it, and the call is over. Super easy. Now, here's the thing. The way the call is going to look is gonna vary depending on if your phone is on or the screen is on or if it's off. Now we just took a call and the screen was on and you notice it came up as a pop-up at the top of the screen. Now guess what? If the phone is not on, it's gonna look a little different when the call comes through. Let's take a look right now. So if you notice, it's coming through a lot bigger now and this uh, screen works different. So I can't just tap on the buttons. I have to put my finger on the option and swipe or drag. So if I wanna answer it, put my finger on the button and then drag. And that's how you answer the call. So a little different. I'm gonna show it one more time. This time I'm gonna decline the call and just show you again using that um, swipe gesture. So call is coming through. I don't wanna answer it. I can simply put my finger on the red button and I can drag it and that will decline the call. So that's what calls will look like when they come through and now you're prepared for the different ways that calls will come through um, on your phone. So that's how you answer, that's how you make a call. Let's move on now to how to send a text message. So this icon is your text messaging icon. Tapping on this will take you to your messaging screen and Normally you'll see a list of different text messages in this uh, screen here. We don't have any right now. I want to initiate a text message to someone. So I'm gonna tap on this message button here. I can tap in the top section here and I can try to type in someone's name that is in my contacts. Or I can tap on this little keypad to the right and this will allow me to then type in a phone number that I want to text. So let's try this now. And I'm going to hit done. And now I'm set up to send a text message to this number. I'm going to tap in the box that says text message. And when you ever tap in a box that you can type in, a keyboard will automatically pop up on the screen that will allow you to enter words. So let's just say hi and hit this button. This is the send button. And that this will initiate the text message. Now, if I wanna send this person a picture that I've taken, 
I can tap on this little picture icon. It's a little picture and a camera to the left of text messages. Tap here and it'll actually show me some of the pictures that I've taken. And hey, I took this picture. I want to attach this to an, a text. Tap on it. And then I'm going to hit this little arrow again to send the picture. And watch this back button. And now I'm out of it. So I just sent the message hi and I just sent this picture. Now you can also send other things as well. If you tap on the plus, you can send GIFs, stickers, you can attach files. You could send your location, a contact, or you can schedule the message and say, hey, don't send this message until 10 a.m. tomorrow. So all those options will be found in this section. So I'm hitting the back button. So I was in the message and I want to go back to the main screen of messages. I'm going to hit the back button and it will now take me here. And if a new message comes through, this will show up in bold and basically tell me that a new message is in my box. So that's how you send a text message and how you attach a picture. Now, let's move on and talk a little bit more about, okay, let's move on and talk about how to download applications or apps. So we talked about how when you're on the home screen, if you swipe up, It'll take you to your app drawer where you'll find all the apps on the phone. Now, if you want more apps, you need to go to this icon that's called Play Store. Now, when you tap on the Play Store icon, this will take you to the store. And this is where you download apps, games. You can also download books. It's kind of your one-stop shop for downloading for the phone. So, if I want to download, let's just say, a solitaire game, I can tap in the box where it says search apps. I can either type solitaire or start typing and then it'll begin to populate up here. Oh look, solitaire. I'm going to tap on the word solitaire and it's going to show me some of the cool solitaire games. Now guess what? Another cool way to do this is simply tapping on the microphone in the upper right corner and then just say the app you want to search for. Let's try it. Solitaire. So by saying it, it's going to automatically input what I'm saying, it's going to give me search results based on what I said. And I like this app. This one looks cool. If you swipe through, you can see pictures of how the app looks. If you like it and say, hey, I want to download it, tap on the install button and give it a few seconds to install on the phone. Now, if you ever see a button, but it doesn't say install in that same section, that means that the app may not be a free app. It might be a paid app. So if you ever see a price in that little box, then that means that it's a paid app, you need to be prepared to pay for the app. So FYI. Now this app has downloaded, which is great. I can tap on this play button here and it will take me right into the app and I can start playing my game. Or I can always save it for later by simply tapping on the home button. Now guess what? Let's say later comes and now I want to play on the app. I'm going to swipe up and guess what? Where's my solitaire app? I don't see it. Swipe to the left because there's multiple pages and you know what? Here's our solitaire game right here. Okay. So tapping on it again will take us in and allow us to start playing the game. So that's a quick rundown of how you download an app on the phone. Um, next, let's move into how do I make the text or the words bigger on the screen? So to do this, we'll need to go to the settings. We're going to swipe down from the top of the screen, take your finger, drag it down the screen. You're going to go to the upper right corner and tap on the settings wheel. And here we're going to go to display. And then from here, We want to go to font size and style tap there and here you're going to find a few options you can utilize to make the words bigger. Now first start with the font size and just drag this little blue bubble to the right and you'll see how big the text gets up here. You can go super big or maybe try to go one notch up at a time 
hit the home button and see if the words are big enough for you. And if you want to go back to make changes, use your recent apps button, tap here, and then you can go right back to the settings. Hey, let's move it up one more and go home. Let's see how that looks. Okay, the words look a little bit bigger. That's good. Recent apps, go back again, move it over again. Words are getting bigger. So this is an easy way to go back and forth to be able to see if you like how big the words are. Keep in mind when you go to text messages, the everything is gonna be larger in here as well. So there's that. Hit our recent apps. We can go back to settings again. You can also make the font bold so the words will be even uh, slightly thicker. So we hit the home button here. Our words are even thicker. So if you like that, now you know that's how big you need to make it. And these are the, the two main uh, changes you would make, changing the font size and, and making it bold um, to uh, make the text bigger. Now, when you go to Google Chrome, for example, you'll notice that the words on the website is even, or, or excuse me, words on web pages are also going to be bigger as well. Um, some sites, it's not gonna change, but for the most part, they will change. So, there is that. Next, let's talk about how to set up your email account. So you wanna sign into your Gmail or your AOL or your Yahoo or your sbcglobal.net. So the first thing you wanna do, go to your Google folder on the home screen and tap on Gmail. Now, a couple of important things to note here. So on this phone, I already have a Google account that's set up. So if I want to add another email account, I'm gonna go to the upper right corner and tap on this little bubble, this red bubble. Your bubble might be a different color, or it may not. You may not even see this screen. When you went to Gmail, you might just see it giving you options for email types. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second. So. Let's go to the bubble in the upper right corner and tap on add another account. Now, for most of you, you probably only saw this when you tapped on the Gmail app. Mine looks different because I already had a Gmail account signed in on the phone. So just keep that in mind. Um, either way, you're either gonna see this or you're gonna see the first thing I showed you, in which case follow the steps to get to this screen. So. Now we need to set up our email account. Now this is great if you have a Yahoo or a Gmail, Google, or an Outlook, Hotmail, or Live, but if you have another email type, this can be a little confusing. For example, if you have an AOL email, it's a little hard to set it up because I don't see that as an option on the screen. So here is a little uh, tip for you. Hit the home button. Go to the Play Store, and then from here, at the top of the screen, tap on the magnifying glass, and we're going to type in AOL, or excuse me, first hit this button all the way in the, the bottom left corner, and look for the little A, the at symbol, and tap on that first, and then we're going to tap on the alphabet button, and then type in AOL.com. And then we're gonna, in the bottom right corner, tap on the magnifying glass to do a search. And this will now show you all the apps that are compatible with AOL.com. This will help you find an appropriate app that will work with your email. Now guess what? Maybe you don't have an AOL. Maybe you have an sbcglobal.net. Maybe you have uh, a netscape.net. Whatever it is, type the at symbol Type in the at blah, 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 dot com, and then search, and it will show you what apps are compatible with that email type. That's an easy way to make sure you find an app that works. And guess what? This AOL app works. That's great. I'm going to tap on this install button here, give it a few seconds, and that's going to download on the phone, and then I can use that app to sign in and check my AOL email accounts. So let's hit our home button. And if we swipe up and swipe to the left, 
you're gonna see, there it is, our AOL app pop up that we can now use to sign in to set up our email accounts. So that is just a workaround if you don't see your email type on this initial screen in Gmail. Important note, even though it's called the Gmail app, you can still use other email types. That's why we see all the options here. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if you don't see the options here, you know what to do. All right, let's move on to our last section of the video, which is gonna be how to take pictures on the phone. So to do this, we're gonna tap on the camera and you're gonna, we're gonna hold up the camera here. Now, it'll tell you what setting you're on. So right now it's on photo, just the basic camera setting. If I tap on this little white circle, it's gonna take a picture, just that easy. If I wanna flip the camera, and take a selfie, I'm gonna tap this button here. And guess what, now, here we are, here's me. And we can take a quick selfie, boom. And let's turn the camera around again. And if I tap, uh, so next to photos to the right, it says video. Now I'm on the setting where I can record a video. Now the cool thing is, this little button has changed. It's no longer a white circle. Now it's a white circle with a red dot on top. And that's how you can dif differentiate if you're taking a video or pictures. So I'm taking a video and then I'm going to tap this camera button here to snap a picture while I'm recording a video. So pretty cool. I can also pinch on the screen if I'd like to zoom in to get even better quality. And then when you're done, hit the little square to stop the video. Now I can also swipe over. We have this setting called portrait and portrait will allow you to take a picture of something, a main subject, and it'll blur out the background. So notice this is in full focus and the background is blurry. So this is great for portrait, portrait pictures of people or getting a nice clear close up of something. Now, let's hit the home button. Now guess what? We've now taken some pictures and now we wanna go see those pictures. Where do I go to find the pictures after I've taken them? Great question. We're gonna swipe up and look for the app that says gallery. This is where all your pictures are saved. So I have a recent folder, I have a camera folder here where I can see all the pictures I've just taken. I can swipe through. And by the way, this camera is amazing. I am blown away with how awesome this quality is. So you just simply swipe over to see all the pictures that you've taken. And then hit the home button here to get back to our main screen. So that's a quick rundown of how to take pictures and videos and then how to go back and find them after you've taken them. Now this takes us to the end of our video. I hope this was helpful. I love creating these videos and being able to just share the knowledge with uh, newer users to smartphones. Hopefully after watching this video, you're not as intimidated by this phone. It's a great phone, it does a lot and it's not that hard to use, feel free to watch this video over and over again until you feel more comfortable. And again, in the uh, comments section, you'll find a link pinned to all of our other videos, tips and tricks, hidden features, um, just a bunch of different um, videos that will help you to learn how to use this phone. It's a great phone. Keep watching videos, keep learning. Do me a favor, if this video was helpful, first hit that like button down below. That helps the video to reach more people. If you know someone else who has this phone, if you can share the video with them, that would be super helpful. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you'll know when we post new videos. And also, leave me a comment down below and let me know, one, if the video was helpful, and two, let me know what section was the most helpful for you, and three, let me know if there's something that I didn't cover that you would like to know how to do on this phone. And I'll try to come back and make a part two of this video so we can just keep learning together. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care and as always, have a good one.